In this lesson today, uh, we are going to discuss a mitotic cell cycle. Uh, to understand a mitotic cell cycle, you need to uh, recall the growth and development in the multicellular organisms, uh, asexual reproduction in uh, the unicellular or multicellular organisms, and uh, the role of uh, cell division in bone marrow uh, during uh, immune responses and uh, the formation of new cells uh, during the wound healing uh, when you get an injury uh, in the skin. In this lesson today, we uh, will discuss uh, mitotic cell cycle. Uh, you know, the multicellular organisms have uh, uh, numerous cells in their bodies. Uh, for example, in uh, an adult human uh, being, adult uh, human individual, uh, there are trillions of cells. Uh, but you know, once uh, every multicellular organism is, uh, you know, that reproduces by sexual reproduction, that... Uh, uh, is once a single-celled uh, structure. Uh, if you recall uh, sexual reproduction, you know an egg is fertilized by a sperm that produces a zygote. The zygote then undergoes uh, repeated mitotic uh, cell divisions uh, to produce identical cells. So it keeps on uh, dividing, producing uh, a large number of cells uh, that is known as an embryo. Uh, then it differentiates into the different cells, uh, making uh, the specialized cells, making tissues, organs, and systems. And uh, that grows into, you know, that grows and develops into a fetus and then a human baby. The growth continues uh, for the whole life. Uh, maybe... Uh, the growth uh, can be defined as uh, the increase in number of cells or the size of the cells. So in uh, the human individual, uh, up to some extent, the cell division continues uh, for whole life. Uh, in uh, the early stages, the cell division is faster, but in the let later stages, uh, the cell division that slows down. Uh, the duration taken place uh, uh, for a cell to divide varies uh, from uh, uh, species to species or uh, maybe tissue uh, to tissue, uh, depending upon the various other factors. Uh, however, uh, in all these cases, uh, the cell follows almost the same pattern or the same sequence of events uh, to prepare itself uh, for division and then divides it into two identical daughter cells. This whole series of uh, events uh, that take place from one cell division to another cell division is known as mitotic cell cycle. So let's see if uh, this is for instance uh, an animal cell. Okay, It undergoes a series of changes and divides it into two cells, two identical cells. So this whole series of events uh, that involves uh, preparation of a cell to undergo division uh, which involves protein synthesis, duplication of cell organelles, and primarily uh, the synthesis of uh, or duplication of the new DNA uh, that is known as mitotic cell cycle. Mitotic cell cycle is divided into three main phases. Uh, it is interface. Most of the time is spent by a cell during this, this phase. This is an interface. 
At the end of the interface, the cell would look uh, the same apparently under a light microscope. So there would be no morphological changes or structural changes uh, in a cell seen under light microscope at the end of this interface. Then it undergoes an M phase. This M phase divides nucleus of a cell into two nuclei and this is known as mitosis. Okay. At the end of this phase, this cell will have two nuclei. Okay. So at the end of this phase, this cell will have two nuclei and then it undergoes the third phase. This is the first phase from here to here. This is an interface. The second is an M phase. And the third is cytokinesis. So at the end of the cytokinesis, uh, the cell is divided into two cells. So this is how the cell undergoes uh, many series of events during this whole uh, cycle. Um, interface is further divided into three phases. The first phase is known as G1 phase or it is known as gap one gap one phase during this phase cell grows in size it increases in size protein synthesis takes place you know uh, the cell has to divide later uh, in the following uh, stages. So it has to uh, prepare some materials for that enzyme activities that are involved. So it needs uh, to have enzymes synthesized uh, during this gap one phase. Uh, in the next phase, the DNA has to be synthesized. Uh, the DNA has to be replicated. So for replication of DNA, some enzymes are needed. So these enzymes are synthesized in uh, you know, an interface. And uh, the most important step that take place in uh, G1 phase is that this cell decides to divide or not to divide. So uh, decision making or commitment to divide or not to divide that take place in gap one phase. So once this cell has decided to uh, divide, it undergoes growth, it uh, uh, synthesizes proteins, and if it has decided not to divide, then it is arrested into a G0 phase. So it will not undergo uh, division, instead it will be arrested in this G0 phase. This G0 phase, uh, you know, this cell uh, does not undergo uh, division, may be later specialized and may be involved in doing some specific function. However, uh, once this cell has decided to divide, uh, you know, it undergoes uh, an S phase. S phase is a synthesis phase where DNA is replicated. At the end of uh, this phase, the DNA uh, is duplicated. Then during the third phase of interface, which is G2 phase, uh, G2 phase. growth in size that continues, DNA uh, 
proof reading and repair takes place in this G2 phase. Centrioles duplicate and cell prepared to divide by uh, the following phases. So let's see uh, the mitotic cycle in detail. And before that, let's uh, let me write the definition for mitotic. cell cycle. So this is series of events that takes place from one to the next cell division. So as I said, it is divided into uh, three main phases. So let's see uh, the first phase, which is an interface. So this, this cell is interface. Uh, we have taken this animal cell from a fish embryo and seen under uh, a light microscope. This cell is uh, during an interface. Maybe you can say this is undergoing through the changes during an interface, but that are not seen under a light microscope. In this animal cell, you can see nuclear membrane is intact. Okay. Nuclear membrane is intact. This is nuclear membrane. So, number one, nuclear membrane is intact. Nucleolus is visible. You can see this is nucleolus. nucleus is visible. Chromosomes are not visible in this structure. Instead, uh, these uh, thin thread-like structures are visible in it. And this is known as chromatin. Uh, when the cell is not dividing, uh, chromosomes are not visible inside it. The cell undergoes uh, preparation during an interphase for the following nuclear and then the cell division. Uh, interphases, as you know, we have discussed previously. Interphase is divided into three phases, which is G1 phase, it is NS phase, and it is G2 phase. During G1 phase, uh, as I said earlier, growth in the size of the cell takes place. So a cell slightly enlarges in size. Otherwise, no changes are seen in the cell. Uh, you will continue to see you will continue to see nucleus, nucleus and chromatin at the end of the G1 phase. During the G1 phase, 
sellers committed to divide or not to divide. So it decides to divide or not to divide. Then protein synthesis takes place during this G1 phase. Apparently there are no changes seen in the structure of an animal cell under a light microscope. If I assume that uh, this chromatin, you know, uh, that could be seen uh, clearly in the form of chromosomes under uh, a light microscope, which obviously uh, is uh, not seen during an interphase, you know, there are specific number of chromosomes in each cells. If I assume that this cell uh, during an interphase, it has uh, two chromosomes in it. So at the beginning of this interface, this cell has two chromosomes. We have already discussed the structure of a chromosome. A chromosome, you know, it has an arm-like structure which is known as chromatid. and a central disc which is centromere. Though these chromosomes are not visible in uh, the nucleus during an interface, but obviously every cell has uh, chromosomes in it. Uh, at the end of the G1 phase, there would be no change in uh, this DNA or in chromosomes. So there will be just two uh, chromosomes at the beginning of G1 phase and at the end of G1 phase. However, at the end of an S phase, the cell will have DNA replicated or DNA duplicated. So this cell will have uh, chromosomes now with two chromatids each. These chromatids are identical and are known as sister chromatids. Still, chromosomes number is two, but DNA has been duplicated at the end of this S phase. Other than uh, duplication of DNA, there are enzymes synthesized uh, there are proteins like uh, uh, tubulin protein synthesized, which makes microtubules, uh, which are involved in spindle formation. And duplication of some cell organelles like uh, centrioles takes place uh, during an interface. So at the end of the G G2, uh, the cell has the same structure, but there are many changes that has uh, taken place in the nucleus.
in the cytoplasm and the cell is now ready to undergo M phase. Let's see. M phase or maybe known as mitosis. The major changes uh, that can be seen under a light microscope that undergo or uh, that take place during mitosis and the following phase. Uh, cytokinesis. Mitosis is a type of nuclear division, a type of nuclear division in which one nucleus divides into two identical nuclei and this mitosis is divided into four phases. It is divided into prophase, metaphase, anaphase and Telophase. So, as I discussed earlier, at the end of the G2 phase, a cell has duplicated chromosomes in it. Each chromosome has two chromatids attached with a central disc. So this cell now undergoes M phase. Though these all changes are continuous and uh, uh, one phase is overlapping with the other phase, but there are fewer uh, distinct phases uh, that we can uh, use to differentiate the cell from one phase to the other phase. Uh, during the first phase, prophase, if you look at this uh, animal cell, the same animal cell, the nuclear membrane is not an intact in this case. Okay, The nuclear membrane has been broken down or is disintegrated. So you see, the nuclear membrane from here has been disintegrated. Nuclear membrane is, so this is prophase. Nuclear membrane is disintegrated. integrated chromatin coils and condenses and nucleus has disappeared nucleus disappeared. Uh, though the centrioles are not very clearly visible uh, in this cell, however, uh, the centrioles that have already been duplicated uh, during G2 phase, they begin to move towards the respective poles and uh, the spindle formation that begins uh, in between them. So these are 
centrioles. So this cell undergoes the first phase, which is prophase. Then it goes to a next phase, which is an M phase. And uh, during an M phase, which is metaphase, see this was prophase, then metaphase. The centrioles are reached to the respective poles. Okay. Centrioles are reached to the opposite poles. Spindle formation or spindle formed. This is spindle. And do you see the chromosomes have aligned themselves on an equator? Uh, you will see uh, these thick structures. Okay. A thick darker uh, region that you see in the center that is the chromosomes have aligned themselves on the equator. These are chromosomes aligned on the equator. They align in this way Uh, as you know, each chromosome has a centromere in the center or a central disc in a chromosome. A centromere has a protein known as kinetochore. So spindle fibers from both sides they attach with this kinetochore. So this is site for attachment of spindle fibers. So from both sides, the spindle fibers attach with this uh, chromosome at kinetochore or at centromeres. So the main distinct feature during the metaphase is the chromosomes are aligned. Chromosomes are aligned at equator or middle line of a cell. So this is an imaginary line that divides cell into the middle or the, maybe uh, this is the middle of the cell. After metaphase, the centromeres are duplicated. during this next phase, which is known as an anaphase. So centromeres are duplicated. Spindle fibers coil and shorten and they pull the sister chromatids apart. In an early phase, you know, this is how 
the sister chromatids will be separated apart by the sh shortening and pulling of these sister chromatids apart by these spindle fibers. In the early stage, uh, you will see uh, these sister chromatids will be closer together. Uh, but as the time progresses in the middle and in the later anaphase, uh, the chromosomes will be uh, moved to their respective poles. So here you see, uh, initially, uh, they were on the middle line. And then they are being moved apart to the respective poles. Sister chromatids are being pulled apart. Uh, spinal fibers are still visible during this phase. So these are spindle fibers and you see these are sister chromatids pulled apart. So the first phase of mitosis is prophase, then metaphase, and then we have an anaphase. Telophase uh, follows anaphase. During telophase, chromosomes uncoil and uncondense and start becoming invisible on both of the sides of this cell. Nuclear formation begins at this stage, though uh, this is not visible in this, but here the nuclear membrane begins to form during the still phase. Spindle formation, spindles, spindle fibers that begins to disintegrate and at the same time inward pinching of the cell membrane that begins during the telophase. So this is cell membrane and this begins to divide the cytoplasm. At the end of this telophase, one nucleus has been divided into two nuclei. Now each nucleus has two chromatids or two chromosomes in it. One sister chromatid from each chromosome has been separated and pulled apart. Uh, it has uncoiled and uncondensed, so it is not visible in this telophase. So at the end of M phase, one nucleus is divided into the two nuclei. In cytokinesis, the cytoplasm uh, divides, so the cell is divided into the two cells. And uh, the chromatin that uh, uncoiled and uncondensed nucleoli become visible again. The nuclear membranes, intact nuclear membranes, you know, are, uh, you know, a distinct line can be seen on outside of it around this denser region. Though these uh, membranes are not visible under a light microscope, uh, but we can differentiate that uh, uh, this 
region outside is uh, showing a continuous line. So this is how uh, one cell is finally divided into the two cells. So this divides into the two cells, each with the same number of chromosomes. Uh, as we started with a cell at the beginning of an interface that has two had two n as two chromosomes, uh, the DNA was duplicated during this S phase. So before S phase, there were two molecules of DNA. Each chromatid has uh, one DNA molecule in it. So as there were just two chromosomes, each with one chromatid, so there were two DNA molecules present in this cell at this time. Uh, and at the end of this uh, S phase, you know, this is at the end of an S phase. Each chromosome had two chromatids. So there were four DNA molecules, but yet two chromosomes here. Uh, during G2 phase, the DNA was not duplicated. So at the end of G2, uh, there were just two chromosomes. Each chromosome had uh, uh, two chromatids uh, that are known as sister chromatids. And during an M phase, these sister chromatids were actually separated apart. If we just look at uh, this behavior of chromosomes during an M phase, you know, uh, during an interphase, if this is an interphase, if we just uh, draw that in a series, if this is an interface, at the beginning, uh, we discussed that this had two chromosomes with the single chromatid. Then at the end of an interface, uh, this is an interface again. At the end of this interface, uh, each had, uh, each chromosome had two sister chromatids. Then it underwent M phase. And at the end of an M phase, the cell had two nuclei. And uh, in each nucleus, it had two chromosomes. And after an S phase, uh, after C phase cytokinesis, the cell was divided into two cells. Each had two chromosomes. The process of uh, mitosis uh, that is involved in growth and development in the multicellular organisms, it is involved in asexual reproduction in unicellular and multicellular organisms, uh, unicellular and multicellular eukaryotic uh, organisms. In prokaryotic organisms, this mitosis is not involved in cell division. Uh, however, in prokaryotic cells, uh, binary fission is involved in division of uh, the cells. Mitosis is also involved in uh, division of the cells in bone marrow to make uh, uh, RBCs and uh, uh, the lymphocytes or the, the other white blood cells that are in involved in 
immune responses. Uh, this also helps in uh, tissue repair uh, when some tissues are damaged or the cells are damaged. Uh, the damaged cells are replaced by the new cells uh, like in uh, when you get an injury uh, on a skin, uh, Malpighian layer or germinative layer in the skin that has cells that have capacity to divide and produce new cells. Uh, these new cells fill up uh, the, the gap uh, formed during an injury and helps in wound healing. Uh, this also, uh, this wound healing also involves uh, mitosis. So that's all about uh, mitotic cycle.